Hello people, in this video, let us look at this topic, infections that cause vaginal discharge. Okay, so um, see vaginal discharge can be <clears throat> normal, mostly it will be normal, don't worry. See, if the, and this vaginal discharge can be more during uh, ovulation or sometimes and it can be less. So it can vary in the amount, it can vary. Okay, so you will know what your normal is. So when, how will you know what is what abnormal is right so you will know that it looks or feels different <clears throat> it has some unpleasant odor that smell and it, there is some itching okay and then there is some dyspareunia that is uh, there is painful intercourse right <clears throat> or this pus that is coming out is purulent like pus like mucopurulent mucus and pus okay or there is blood staining right um, so you will be able to say right i think as a as an individual whether it feels abnormal or not right so it should be associated with some other things that is what this uh, we are trying to say okay so um, this can be because of infective causes or non infective causes okay in this video we are trying to look at only all the infective causes and their treatment okay so most of these uh, times, you know, it will not be a sexually transmitted disease or something. But sometimes it can be a sexually transmitted disease like trichomoniasis or gonorrhea or chlamydia. So we keep in mind, we are looking at infective. Infective means what? Some organism has come and it is uh, living there now. Okay, so basically you understood. Okay, so those can be, it can be fungus like candida. <clears throat> it can be a protozoa like trichomony, uh, trichomonas, right? That can actually be a very common sexually transmitted disease. <clears throat> bacterial vaginosis means the bacteria in the back in the vagina itself those bacteria are um, overacting so you understood right because of some balance has gone then uh, aerobic vaginitis they are talking talking about streptococcal and staphylococcal infection and then you have other stis like chlamydia and gonorrhea again these are also bacteria only right so did you understand what bacterial vaginosis is it is not that it is all the bacteria on earth are coming under this. No, it is only the bacteria which live there, like Gardnerella, right? Gardnerella, those kind of bacteria which actually live there. Okay. So when you um, uh, do this, you know, you should check for vulvovaginal swabs. Okay. You should check for. Um, if you want to remove, uh, uh, rule out STI, you know, chlamydia, gonorrhea, trichomonas vaginalis. These three only they are telling in STI, uh, they are saying, okay. So you will uh, examine uh, the, the speculum. So you must be knowing in uh, gynecology how they do it. So they also vaginal, uh, they uh, check, right? They do speculum examination or they can even take a swab, right? And they will check it under the uh, microscope with gram stain, whatever they think is right, right? So did you understand people what and all we are looking for? One is pH. One is pH that you will check for. Okay. So you will check for in speculum examination you will do. You will check pH. Then under microscope you can check for the organism with required staining. Okay. Then what else did they say? Swab you would have taken. Okay. Swab. Okay. So these all you will do. Now uh, if it is candida how will it look? So yeast like fungus it is. So basically... Um, look at the uh, features in candida we are looking at the first one first organism infection okay candida so here <clears throat> curdy discharge so this word you have to write curdy discharge right what type of discharge curdy discharge and the vaginal ph is less than uh, 4.5 so it is acidic right and you can see fungal spores and pseudo hyphae on microscopy okay so spores and pseudo hyphae so that will tell you that it is a fungus right and then you will get the diagnosis of candida so where uh, vulval and vaginal erythema that means they look red the vulva and vagina okay clinical features vulva and vaginal examination we told you it will be having erythema curdy white discharge which is adherent to the walls of the vagina and low vaginal ph same thing again and again has been written okay so you understood uh, candida candidiasis right oral vaginal vaginal now, how will you treat this also? Let us look off at this uh, instant itself. So, treatment is fluconazole or clotrimazole uh, with uh, uh, tablet, sorry, pessary with uh, cream. Okay. So, they are telling pessary and cream. Pessary means what? You will put it in the vagina, right? And cream. Okay. So, you can look at the dose also here. Fluconazole uh, is a tablet. Okay. 
orally so basically fluconazole you should avoid in pregnancy and breastfeeding remember people there are some things that you should know here fluconazole you should avoid in pregnancy and breastfeeding because it can affect the fetus or the newborn clotrimazole can damage condoms and diaphragms okay so these are again some things that they are telling you to be pay, paying attention to so in this video what are we looking at we're looking at all the infections right which are affecting your vagina and how to treat them in detail we are looking at okay so how will you treat candidiasis uh, antifungal like fluconazole clotrimazole okay move on very good i think for now you just remember the names of the drugs that's enough okay dose and all you can come back and read <clears throat> curdy white discharge ph will be less spore pseudo hyphae you can see on microscopy okay that's it <clears throat> erythemas i think sure you will write all that now trichomonas so trichomoniasis is caused by trichomonas this is a protozoa it has flagella so it will be motile and moving around if you check under microscopy the discharge okay so wet mount discharge you should do so it will have some uh, it is wet so it can move around so remember and here the discharge will be greenish okay so you remember that profuse discharge lot of discharge frothy uh, frothy uh, profuse yellow or green discharge okay and uh, always you will write vulvo vaginal inflammation i'm sure right and uh, this is a, uh, uh, a very high ph very high ph means more than the uh, 4.5 um, so remember okay very high ph very high ph then then you can also detect the organism by NAAT that is nucleic acid amplification test right any organism you can detect by that actually or you can just do a microbiology analysis okay then coming down here so we told you vulva vagina vulval and vaginal inflammation will be there frothy green discharge etc so basically the treatment is metronidazole metronidazole uh, metronidazole basically you can give uh, uh, twice daily or you can give one super high dose they are saying okay 2 gram orally single dose okay this metronidazole twice daily they are saying around 5 to 7 days remember after taking metronidazole you should not uh, drink alcohol for 2 days okay and you should avoid these high dose regimens in pregnancy and breastfeeding remember it is one of the sti sexually transmitted diseases so you'll have to treat the partner also okay men women both are going to be treated okay now we moved on to bacterial vaginosis like we told you bacterial vaginosis means what the bacteria which are naturally living in the vagina have become disturbed okay so here you can see the names of the organisms which are going to be involved okay so the ones that live in the vagina normally so uh, here also the ph will be greater than 4.5 only they are saying so uh, all of these have uh, greater ph okay so here homogeneous off white discharge in bacteria off white discharge so there will be uh, microscopy if you check you will see gram variable organisms gram variable so they are neither um they are neither gram positive nor gram negative so that's what they are saying okay then so you will see something called as clue cells that's what they are saying under the microscope let me highlight this clue cells word gram variable okay zoom 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 gram variable okay so these are coating the these bacteria are coating the squamous cells vaginal squamous cells so uh, this, these are also called as clue cells let me show you the diagram so where do you think the anaerobic organisms are the margin of this vaginal cell is obscured by a coating of anaerobic organisms okay this is the clue cell so looks like all the bacteria have attacked this squamous cell of the vagina clue cell these are all clue cells so here there will be increased discharge without any itch or irritation accompanied by unpleasant or fishy odor worse after intercourse and during menstruation so this is bacterial vaginosis okay so it is caused by this gardnerella vaginalis bacteroids mobilunculus etc okay so here what they are saying is there is no inflammation when you do speculum examination you will not see inflammation so let's make this as a green there's no inflammation white homogeneous discharge we told you high vaginal ph high vaginal ph only we have been seeing all this while right but in candidiasis we saw that it is a low ph the ph is low in this okay 
So in trichomoniasis and bacterial vaginosis, the vaginal pH is high. That is, it is slightly more basic than normal. See, it is not basic. It is still acidic only, but it is slightly more basic. You understood what I am saying? What is the treatment? Again, metronidazole, you can say. Okay, metronidazole. Again, metronidazole, you should not give in um, pregnancy and breastfeeding. High dose, you should not give. And uh, you should not take alcohol 48 hours after taking metronidazole. Okay. Up to 48. After 48, what is that? Avoid alcohol until 48 hours. Okay. Then coming to clindamycin. Clindamycin also you can give people. Do you know where we are in the slide? Scroll down here. We are here. So bacterial vaginosis we are trying to treat. Clindamycin, vaginal, pessary, vaginal, sorry, is that pessary? Vaginal cream, sorry, vaginal cream you should give. Clindamycin, okay. And you should avoid this in pregnancy and breastfeeding. And um, clindamycin, see we saw one point here. Clindamycin will damage condom and diaphragm. So we will make a note of that here also. Damages latex, condom, and diaphragm, right? So, anyways, now you got bacterial vaginosis overall. How will you treat metronidazole, clindamycin? Okay. Got it, people? So, basically, there was one word here. This is anaerobic organisms. Can you highlight that? This is anaerobic. That is why they are giving metronidazole, right? So, you are done with bacterial vaginosis, people. Now, let's move on to the next one. Don't worry. Now, it's very fast. We'll go. Aerobic vaginitis like streptococcal and staphylococcal infection. So, this will have purulent vaginal discharge. Typical bacterial, right? Purulent it is because it has pus. Because there is, uh, okay, aerobic. So, purulent vaginal discharge. And uh, you can uh, do a sensitivity test, antibiotic sensitivity test. And based on the antibiotic, you can give the treatment. Okay. Then move on. Gonorrhea. So, STIs. So, gonorrhea basically inflamed cervix. Yeah, we will write that everywhere almost. Inflamed cervix except for where bacterial vaginosis, no inflammation, they said. So, gonorrhea uh, is um, Neisseria gonorrhea, right? So, it is gram-negative organism. So, um, so, NAT culture you should do. That is nucleic acid amplification test they are telling to do. Okay. So, whoever has this risk, STI risk, okay, for them they are saying. So, clinical examination microscopy won't help much that they are saying. So, you should do NAT, okay, culture, also culture or culture also you can do, gonorrhea, okay. How will you culture Nisseria gonorrhea? So, these don't grow on normal uh, media. So, you need some Thayer Martin, modified Thayer Martin medium with antibiotics so that all the other bacteria can be removed, looks like, right. New York City, Medium. Martin Lewis medium. What names? New York City medium. For what? Gonorrhea. Gonorrhea. See, this is how Neisseria gonorrhea will be. Diplococci. Okay, with adjacent surfaces concave. Purulent or mucopurulent discharge. Uh, so, this is pus type. Okay, and then blood staining can be there. So, let's make this red color. Blood staining. Okay, postcoital or intermenstrual bleeding indicates possibility of a discharge originating from an inflamed cervix okay and uh, it is an STI okay it could be an STI now let's go on to the next one chlamydia also is similar that only STI so chlamydia also they are same same thing blood staining purulent mucopurulent discharge etc okay blood staining bleeding and all that you can remember for chlamydia also then lastly we are coming to how to treat this part of it right STI treatment so, basically, you have to treat partner also. You have to suggest prevention like using condoms, etc. Abstain, uh, abstain uh, etc. Hepatitis B immunization, you can suggest. You can also follow up with these people. So, there are a lot of STI kits. I think vaginal discharge is this uh, kit 2, green kit, where there is uh, secnidazole and fluconazole. But that sounds more like a fungal treatment to me. For gonorrhea, they are suggesting ceftriaxone, actually. Ceftriaxone, doxycycline, okay. So, don't forget to treat the partners also. I will put here as partners. N E R S, partner spelling. Yeah. Partner. Partners also. So, in this video, you looked at uh, all the infections that cause vaginal discharge and how to treat them. All this you have looked at. Okay. Bye bye.